What's up guys and girls and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're enjoying the build so far. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for all the upcoming videos. I've got lots more planned for this bus, including something on the front, but we'll get there when that happens. If you're new to the channel and you haven't realized what I'm doing, I've basically had a uh, 2005 uh, twin sliding tailgate combi sat on my drive for a bit of time. Um, my last van was a 5.1, uh, the white one that you've seen in some of the videos. Um, happily and sadly, uh, that's gone to a new owner, which released some funds for me to have a play around with this van. In this video, we're going to be fitting the split charge system. Now, I've gone for a uh, rains kit. It's come all fully prepared, although I have had to shorten a couple of cables because I don't need them quite so long. Um, and I'm going to go and fit it underneath the passenger seat. Um, what? Oh, um, under the passenger seat, um, because most of the other parts of the electrics and everything like that in this van are under the passenger seat. And I guess uh, you might want to do something under that seat. Okay, so you heard from the man himself, that's why. So I may well put um, a sub or, sorry, I think my voice just broke there, a sub. I may well put a sub or a heater or something under this side of the van. So I'm going to need to keep um, underneath the driver's side of the seat. Uh, open just in case I decide that I'd want to do that um, now being it a twin slider it's not going to have um, a kitchen unit down one side um, so it's a little bit harder to run power leads and stuff all the way to the back of the van uh, you would have seen in the uh, the dashboard video I actually fitted in my uh, rear speaker uh, cable I haven't actually you can just about see in the back there. I haven't actually fitted those speakers yet. I want to do a video on building a uh, roof mounted box for those. Um, so that'll be in a video. And also you can see above my head that I haven't got my bed board in. Let me just see if I can go from where it is. It's from like there to over here somewhere. Um, I haven't actually fitted that yet. I also want to do a, um, a video on how to fit one of those. Um, you know, in the long run, you could save some money doing that yourself. Uh, so, let's get cracking. Let's go. Okay, so let's take a look in the box. So, I have purchased a... Let me get this right. A rains kit, um, which basically comes with everything I need uh, in order to fit my stuff. So I've got some double sided thingies, some more double sided thingies for hiding cables and cable ties some 100 amp fuses, a couple of fuse box jobbies. Right, the battery terminals themselves, should have two, plus and a negative, that's quite important. We'll look at the battery I'm gonna be using when I get around to installing that in the video. So we'll take a look at that a bit more closely. Um, black one, earth, yeah, I'm hoping you guys would know that already. Uh, some of this stuff just to protect the cables when you're running it through the van. Although I'm going to be using something potentially a little bit different. Uh, some heat shrink and terminals. A few screws and tools and bits to mount pieces where you need them. A cargo split charge. 
So it's a voltage sensor one. So if you're fitting a similar thing to your van, basically what this does is, I'll show you when it's all set up, I'll show you the actual light coming on, etc. But you start your vehicle, your battery charges, once your battery reaches it's fully charged, this clicks in and it begins to charge your leisure battery. Simple. And then a load of positive power. Lots of little bits, already pre-done, so we can get this into the van. What we're going to do first is remove the battery cover. Um, because there's an access panel with a grommet, ideal for adding the split charge system in. Okay, so I've got a little 10 mil and obviously the plastic screw this side and then lift her out. What we're going to want to be doing is taking out this panel in here. But before we do that, I'm going to want to just mark where I'd like the um, split charge lead to run through this panel. Okay, now what we want to do is remove the rubber seal. And under here is two uh, Torx bits. Now you can just about prise this open to be able to get into the Torx piece. There's another Torx piece there. So we can remove this panel. or I'm going to be giving this a bit of a clean. All right, so we marked out the hole and I'm just going to open that up. Now I'm going to open it up a little bit, obviously bigger than this cable, because uh, this is the cable that's going to be running through to the battery supercharge system itself. Um, now what I don't want to do is damage this poking it through. Um, so I'm just going to open this up quick. days. Right, I'm going to build quite a bit of this whilst sort of at the workbench. Um, so what I'm going to be using um, to help me out with this cable especially is this. So, for this section here and the section in the engine bay, I'm going to be using this sort of stuff now. This is like military grade um, cable for covering, sorry, cable coverer, as it were. Uh, it's a bit fiddly. I'm going to probably get this all wrong, but I'm going to try and thread that inside there. And now I'll try and thread it along just to add some protection against the metal work. I'm also going to add a little rubber grommet. So I'm going to thread that on and I'll see you in a sec. Then what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of electrical tape on either end of this just to make sure it stays where I want it to stay on the cable. Awesome. There's my grommet, and uh, I've just cable tied, keep it nice and neat. Okay, so I've got my rubber grommet in, I've got my cable in. Now, some of you might have noticed that I'm going the long way around the battery. Let me take you over and show you why. So what I've done is mount my fuse down here. 
So I'm going to run my cable around my battery. Right. Um, right. So ignore the the shadow, um, and I'll try not to get myself in the light too much, so I'm in the way. But we're going to be using this grommet here. We're going to be using that grommet to take ourselves in to the engine. So we're going to go and put a hole in here and pass the cable through. Okay, I am going to leave, um, I suppose, a couple of feet. There's no harm in that, just inside. So if you've ever got to remove this panel again, you have got a bit of leeway. So I've removed the glove box, and what I've done is I've just poked a bit of red cable um, down here. So what I've done is I've just poked a bit of red cable through that grommet. Now you can see um, the hole there and the red cable. So that's just so you can see where that grommet comes out behind the glove box. So we're going to thread all the cable through, tidy up the front so we're finished in the engine bay. So she's in and the grommet is back in. So now I can just manage to get this piece back into where it needs to be. So what we're going to do now is remove the seat base. Four bolts around the bottom. I'm just going to release the cables from here. Probably going to reuse that clip so I don't want to break it. And then you can lift out the seat base. What I'm going to do is run the cable down along, under, and round, and then up. So I'm going to remove some of these little bits, have a little tidy up, and I'll show you threading the cable through. Okay, so the cable itself is running, I don't, if you can just about see it inside here, let me see if I can get up and wiggle it around for you. Yeah, can you just see that? So that's that cable there, so that's the power for the split charge, and that's going to run down here, or it is running down here, it's under there, and it's to here. So I'm just going to put the rest of this back together, and then we'll move on to the next step. I'm now going to run this cable around here. And then under here, I'm just going to peel the carpet back and I'm just going to cut a little channel in here um, so that the cable will just go in there and it won't be squashed too much. Well, in fact, it won't be squashed at all here, but it just means it's, there's a little nice gap for it to fit. So just a quick recap. Um, the split charge cable's come down here. It's gone around. It's gone under. So let me just show you here. I joined in to the existing loom. Uh, connections I suppose uh, and then it's just come up there right so I'm going to take a base away and I'm going to build a little bit um, onto it where I can house the fuse box and stuff so at the moment it looks like this um, piece of wood with lots of holes in <laughs> um, yeah starting to come alive okay guys I wanted to show you where I'm at um, so I've got my battery fitted in, um, I've got to um, strap it and secure it in place in a moment, um, I've got like an eye hook that I'm going to bolt onto there and then this is like a uh, sort of like a ratchet strap so I'll shorten that cable up so you can literally pull it tight and it will just be sat in place. Um, I'll tell you about the battery I've gone for in a minute. Um, what else can I go for? Uh, my panel is in the front here. It's kind of like hinged in um, so that you can push it up 
uh, from the front so you can access stuff if you need to add any cables. Um, right, so let's go through. My fuse box um, is currently only running my rear lights. Let me just flip them on. So you can see that the light changes in the van. Um, and that's fused itself and that runs to the battery. So the whole fuse box has got a 50 amp fuse in there. Um, so that's basically to cover everything that's in the fuse box. Um, the fuse box itself um, it will also um, have fuses in two or, or does have fuses in. So it's got a fuse for uh, the lights. It's got a fuse for the USBs that are in the back. Um, yeah, what else do I need to let you know? Ding, 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 ding. Right, let's check out the battery and I'll tell you which one I've gone for because um, it fits nice and snugly under the seat. So the battery itself is a 12 volt, um, 100 amp um, uh, low box leisure sealed battery. Um, so it's very small and it fits nice and snugly underneath the seat. Uh, it's got low terminals, so I haven't got to worry about anything like that catching. Uh, I've managed to put the runners on and check out the runners sort of moving back and forth and make sure that these are clear, which they are. So overall, I'm really happy with the battery that I've chosen to go in the van. Um, if anyone else is interested in this battery, I'll put a link to um, where I got it from uh, below. Uh, it's Barden UK uh, Limited. They specialise in batteries and solar panels and stuff like that. Uh, right, so let me just show you the actual um, split charge system kicking in. Um, so as I turn the engine on now, you'll see that the light engages pretty much straight away. Um, that's because my main battery is fully charged and now it can charge the leisure battery. So my battery itself is now um, secured in. Um, I've just put a 10 mil bolt, a uh, little like eye hook, and they're like a small ratchet strap down. So that's nice and secure. Next step is to get the seat bolted back in. Two 13 mil bolts at the front. Or nuts, should I say. Make sure both of these are nice and tight. And found you'll probably need a spanner. You can't quite get a socket onto these. Um, I did try, but I didn't really want to damage any of these plastics. And on the rears, there is two um, M10 spline bolts, one there and one here. Again, make sure these are nice and tight. All that's left for me to do here is put the cover back on. So that's it from another video from me guys. Uh, this is Tom, this is T-Dubs. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit the subscribe button, uh, follow the Blue 5 build. Uh, I hope the video is useful for some of you. Uh, some of you with the twin sliders that are taking your cables and, and what have you into the back. Um, you need to obviously make sure that you run these cables and everything that you're gonna do into the back of the van before you end up doing a roof because you'll really struggle to get the cables in. Um, but if you're like me and you're just popping it under a seat, uh, take your pick. You have either got a driver's seat or if you've got the twin seat, then you've got a lot more space than I have. But if you've just got a single seat, um, you'll find the choice, you know, you've only got two seats to go for. Um, and as I said at the beginning of the video, when I was kind of messing around, um, I may well go for a 
a heater or a sub or something underneath the driver's seat, uh, hence why putting everything under the um, passenger seat. Uh, just on that thought, actually, if I'm going for a sub in the van, to get the optimal feel of the sound and the music and the clarity and everything like that, putting it underneath you is better than just putting it somewhere else because that's where you're sat. That's where you're going to feel uh, the music, as it were. Uh, so, yeah, um, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, smash the thumbs up button, hit the bell icon, all of that jazz. Uh, this is Tom, this is T-Dubs, and I will see you in episode eight. Where I'll be fitting my curtains. <laughs>